Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. I asked you guys about what topic would you like me to cover in the next video and most of you have voted for a SID or standard instrument departure. But also some of you voted for how to pass your ATPL exams. That's why I have decided that in the next video, we will be talking all about tips and tricks on how to easily pass your ATPL exams and get through your flight training. However, on today's video, let's talk about um, SIDS. Before we get started though, kindly consider help the channel grow to spread the word if you find this video helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, let's see what we'll be covering in this video. First, we're going to talk about what is a SID, why do we need a SID or the goal of um, a SID, types of SIDs, how to break down a SID, and last but not least, how to load a SID on the G1000. Well, what is a SID in the first place? Well, a SID, or a Standard Instrument Departure Route, is a standard ATS route, or air traffic service route, identified in an instrument departure procedure by which an aircraft should proceed from takeoff phase to an inward phase. In other simpler terms, it is a predetermined route published that takes you from the takeoff phase and transition you into the inward phase. SIDs are mainly published for major and busy airports. So now, Let's look at the goal of the SIDs, or why do we need a SID? There are two reasons the departure procedure have been put into place. The first, obstacle clearance. And in this case, it is referred to as ODP, or obstacle departure clearance. ODPs guarantee you clearance from nearby obstacles in the departure phase. Think about it this way. These departures are designed for IFR traffic. Say you are flying out of an unfamiliar airport in reduced visibility. Well, I personally would very much appreciate a road to guide me from the departure end of runway to my first waypoint in the airway without hugging any obstacle in the way. Number two is traffic flow. At major airports, the volume of traffic can be very demanding for ATC to factor each and every aircraft separately. So the goal here is to assign SIDs to flights according to their direction of flight and runway in use, of course. This way, the traffic flow will be smoother and more efficient, allowing the airspace to accommodate more aircraft and minimize confusion with minimum communication. These types of departures are called standard instrument departure. All right, so here's a quick recap before we move on. Departure procedures are two types. We have obstacle clearance departure and standard instrument departure. Depending on the purpose, the procedure was designed for the name is given. Sometimes the departure procedure may employ both objectives, all right, and will be referred to as a hybrid um, departure. We'll be looking at each one of the, these types in details shortly. All right, now types of SIDs. There are three main types of SIDs. First, we have RNAV RP SIDs, radar vector SIDs, and hybrid SIDs. An RNAV or RP SID. Uh, by the way, if you are wondering what is the difference between RNAV and RMP, I have made a separate video explaining in details the difference. The link to it is in the description below or also in the top right hand corner of this video. And I promise you guys, after watching that video, you will once and for all clear all um, your doubts about the difference between RNAV and RMP. So let's get back to our SIDs. First, RNAV or RMP SID is a SID where the pilot is primarily responsible for navigation along the state route. It allows for aircraft to get from the runway to its assigned route with no vectoring required from air traffic control. They are established for airports where terrain and or restrictions or related safety factors dictate a specific ground track to be flown. All right, now a radar vector is said. A radar vector SID is used where air traffic control provides radar navigation guidance or vectors to a filed or assigned route to or to a fix depicted on a SID, like the one shown in front of you right now. Flying a vector SID may require first flying an obstacle departure procedure, ODP. This is usually annotated in the ODP section stating fly runway heading to so-and-so altitude prior to making any turns. This ensures the aircraft is clear of any obstacles. Vector SIDs give air traffic control more control over air traffic routing than do pilot nav SIDs. 
Number three, or the, the third uh, type of SID, we have a hybrid SID. A hybrid SID is a departure that combines elements of both RNF, RMP, and radar vector departures. A hybrid SID usually requires the pilot to fly a set of instructions, then be vectored to a defined route to a transition to leave the terminal area. And often in real uh, life, we fly a hybrid SID where we receive a departure clearance to depart via a specific SID and once airborne, we contact radar control or departure control and then they give us a direct to vector. Only, of course, if traffic permits. Now let's get to breaking down a SID. Well, to read a SID, we first need to have one. So we can obtain one either from the official website of a local authority of the country you're in, so through the EIP, or Aeronautical Information Publication, uh, Aerodrome section, or from the Jeppesen if you have a subscription. In this video, we'll be looking at a Jeppesen uh, SID model. The layout may look different uh, from the, your local uh, authority or from the FAA or from any other um, uh, entity, but the information is the same regardless what form of SID you are using or you're looking at. For the sake of this video, we'll be looking at the um, an RNAV SID, pattern 1 November out of OTBD. Doha International in Qatar and for the flow of reading a chart is from left to right and top to bottom okay so let's get started first of all we have the ICAO um, designator of the uh, airport slash the IATA designator so it's OTBD DIA it's Doha International and then we see the uh, date the last issuance or the last version so in this case it's the 2nd of october 2020 it was issued and it is effective from the 8th of october okay and then you cross check that you are looking at the same chart by the designator or the index which is 10-3 kilo all right so just you and your first officer your and your captain call out um please confirm you have 10-3 kilo I confirm that's a good CRM and to avoid any uh, confusion okay next we move on to the uh, city and the country Doha Qatar and then the SID like we said there are three types vector RNAV RP SID and hybrid this one is an RNAV SID next we have the Doha approach or radar so when uh, you are clear for takeoff the next um, ATC body you contact is the Doha approach we have the frequency 119725 the airport elevation is next 37 feet and here we have some instructions well we have the transition altitude of 13,000 feet 13,000 feet and number one this is an RMP1 departure so depending on the accuracy of your aircraft systems only you can fly this air, this SID if you are an RMP-1. Of course, for training purposes, you can still fly um, if you have an RMP-5, RMP-10, as long as you are under radar control and you get permission to do so by ETC. Second, immediately after takeoff, contact Doha approach. So as soon as you're 200 feet, 300 feet, because let's uh, be real, you cannot just be airborne 30, or 50 feet and you contact them they won't be able to see you because radar doesn't function or doesn't pick up um, aircraft below a certain altitude remember the minimum vectoring altitude so you just wait until like 100 150 up to 200 feet and then you contact them on initial contact you include the designated set so that they know we which direction you're going so this one it is pattern one november so here is the designator okay next it says expect closing obstacles and then no turns before departure end of runway so you just maintain runway heading until departure end of runway and then if you would like to turn so here we have the designated pattern 1 november rmp departure runway 33 we have some speed restrictions maximum 250 knots until passing 10,000 feet unless otherwise instructed by etc or required by SID, which is uh, pretty standard and then we have before we go to the layout of the, um, the the SID, let's look at something quite interesting here. It says this SID requires a minimum climb gradient of nine point two percent 
up to 640. And this is because of some towers in the area. I'll know this because of local knowledge. I fly from this airport for my entire training. So I know that there are some train, uh, some uh, towers and uh, skyscrapers up, uh, up ahead. So you cross check what is your estimated ground speed for the climb. And then you see the required rate of climb in feet per minute here. So you may want to check this out before flight, especially if you're flying a twin engine, because sometimes, well, most of the time, the performance degrades significantly if you lose one engine, and especially if you have an engine failure below 640 feet, you won't be able to comply with this climb gradient with only one engine. So you, you might wanna consider some escape route so that you don't hug any building during a climb out, okay? Okay, next, let's look at the uh, plan view now. Okay, you can see here, this is the runway, 336. So you climb, you take off and you maintain runway heading up to 500 feet, departure and so no turns before departure in the runway as he instructed. So 500 feet or above, then you make a left turn heading 334 and you fly direct to Getem. You cross Getem 2500 or above. This line here, under the 2500 indicates that you have to cross that fix at that altitude or higher. And then you just continue, get them to Inili, to Coben, again, Coben, an uh, altitude restrictions of 5,000 feet or above, Debil, 6,000 feet or above, Alnac, if you see both lines above and under an altitude, that means you have to cross that waypoint at that exact altitude. 7,000 feet, of course, unless instructed by ATC. And one more thing to keep in mind, if you are cleared for a SID without a specific altitude, just by the uh, instruction climb via pattern one November, that means you have to adhere to each um, altitude clearance by each waypoint. Just because on next 7,000 feet, you cannot just continue climbing at 7,000 feet by Getem or by Inali, you have to cross each waypoint at that, okay? So you just uh, put in the, um, the SID in your Garmin or your FMS and you just fly it um, track to track to track on the way to Patam. The G1000 gives you pretty much everything you need from tracks, uh, time, ETAs, and altitude restrictions, everything. It's an amazing um, an avionic. So you just fly all the way to Patam, and from Patam you join the airway, depending on whichever way um, or direction you're flying to. All right, now let's move on to how to load the SID into the G1000. So first, come to here. Proc or procedure, and it gives you three options. Select approach, arrival, and departure. This way departing, you go to departure, and click enter. We check the correct airport, and here are all the published departure. With the big knob, we switch. We keep scrolling down to the departure you are interested in. For example, for example, one 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 five is associated with the pattern one here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose. For you, you can choose any uh, departure that is uh, appropriate for you. Pattern one here, and go enter and load. It is always important to cross-check the waypoints on the G1000 with the appropriate uh, chart you have. So just go with the, your copy or the Jeppesen and cross-check that your G1000 has loaded all the waypoints in the uh, set, star or the uh, approach or sorry, the instrument. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be more than happy to answer each and every one. As always, until the next video, see ya.